My name is Doug Staker. I'm the Senior Vice President of Operations. I'm a mechanical engineer. I've been working with uh, Carbon Quest since its inception two years ago. This is the first in-building carbon capture system at this scale in this type of building in the world. It's been operational since just after Thanksgiving of 2021 and we've been in testing phase here for the last six months and things look pretty good. Well, here we're in the basement of a 30-story high-rise here in New York City. We're in a parking garage and our equipment can be located in different angles and, and fittings and that's kind of the beauty of the design. This building is going to exceed its emissions by about 400 metric tons per year starting in 2024. This system is designed to reduce the overall emissions in the building by about 25%, which will get them back in alignment with what they're allocated as far as the emissions for this type of building, this many square feet. We start our whole system process at the main source of exhaust, which is the boiler systems. These boilers burn natural gas. When you burn natural gas, you have four main byproducts, water vapor, nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. We follow the path where the boilers go from their connection to the chimney, and a lot of times it'll be a duct system, which is in New York terms known as a breaching. Then we'll size our system and tap into that breaching so that we know what portion of the exhaust do we need to pull into our system and begin the process. We'll pull in exhaust from the boiler system and we do that because the next stage that we have is compression. It's the suction from the compressor system that pulls the exhaust through the heat exchanger. We cool that exhaust from about 250 degrees down to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we have dry exhaust. There's nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide in that gas. We'll take that from atmospheric pressure and we'll pressurize it up to 100 PSI. And in the next phase is where we'll run that gas through what they call a desiccant dryer. And we have dual tanks. The system's designed so the major flow, up to 400 standard cubic feet per minute, can go through that desiccant tank and extract the last of the water vapor down to the parts per million level. Now we enter in the really the heart of the system, which is known as a pressure swing absorption system. There's nine tanks and we'll charge a tank up to 100 PSI. There's a intricate valving system that allows us to switch tanks uh, fairly rapidly and we'll pressurize each of those tanks, let it dwell for a little bit, and then we'll lower the pressure down to atmospheric pressure, down to zero PSI. The adsorbent that we use has a high affinity for CO2, and not so much for the nitrogen and oxygen. So to get the CO2 out of the tanks, you actually have to tug on it. You put it under vacuum, it's relatively pure CO2 going to the next phase, which is liquefaction. We compress that up to 300 PSI, and then we cool it again because the act of compression puts heat into the gas. Then we'll move it into a heat exchanger. We need to get the CO2 at 300 PSI down to about minus one degrees Fahrenheit, and that transforms it from a gas into a liquid and then it moves in through gravity into a cryo tank that is able to keep the liquid super cooled for an extended period of time. The tank here holds about 3,000 liters, roughly about 700 gallons. In the winter, it's about every other day we'll fill the tank. In the summer, it's about once a week. We just schedule with our off takers to have a truck come by, we'll pump it out to the street and we'll move it out to where we're gonna now take the carbon dioxide and transform it through an off-tank process.